you realize because of evangelistic, evangelical preaching, most people think that somehow our, our sins were atoned for because the Romans beat up Jesus? Uh, Easter is coming, and I dread it for the sermons that we are going to hear. The preacher will say things like this. Christ said, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. And, and they say then, they usually go on and say, in his omniscience, he looked forward and he saw the cat of nine tails coming across his back. He saw the crown of thorns and the mockery. He saw the nails in his hands and his feet and it caused him to sweat as though great drops of blood. Well, let me tell you something. The physical agony of Christ was absolutely essential in the atonement. And I'll take nothing away from it. But if that's all you tell your people, you are not telling them about Calvary. And I'll prove it for the next three centuries. Read everything you can on martyrdom. The little disciples, the little sheep of Jesus, were carried off to crosses. Some of them crucified upside down. Some of them set on fire. And yet the history of martyrdom tells us that they went to those crosses with their chest out, playing the man, singing hymns, counting it a majestic privilege to die like their Lord. So are you telling me the champion of their salvation is now cowering in a garden? What was in the cup? Psalm 75. For a cup is in the hand of the Lord, and the wine foams. It is well mixed, and he pours out of this. Surely all the wicked of the earth must drain and drink down its dregs. Jeremiah agrees. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, he says to me, Take this cup of the wine of wrath from my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. They will drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I will send among them. I remember one time teaching in a school. It was a school founded upon the tradition of the Reformation. And I went there to preach in chapel. And I, and I said, who am I preaching to? And they said, kindergarten through the 12th grade. And I said, That's I said, I was going to preach on propitiation. And the headmaster said, that won't be a problem here, sir. And so I began to teach. And as I got to the cup, I asked the student body, I said, what was in the cup? What was in the cup? And in true Reformed tradition, this little nine-year-old girl raised her hand. And I called on her. She stood beside her desk and put her little hand on the top of her desk and stood there straight as an arrow. And she said, sir, the wrath of Almighty God was in the cup. That's beautiful. That's marvelous. Think, preachers, you oftentimes assume too much. That your people understand the cross, but I can tell you all over the world, I've had people come up to me in tears and say, Brother Washer, for 15 years I have, I have rolled upon Christ. I have trusted Christ, but I never could figure out in all this preaching how the fact that Romans and Jews beat him up somehow atoned for my sin. But tonight I understand. He was crushed. It pleased the Lord to crush him. To crush him. Imagine you're in a little village and you're just a, a quarter of an eighth of a mile away from a dam and you're at the very bottom of that dam on a river and the dam is a thousand miles high and a thousand miles wide and it's filled to the brim and one morning you wake up to a sound like the world cracking in two and you run to the window of your house and you see that the dam is broke and a wall of water higher than heaven is coming toward you your strength of stroke doesn't matter how fleet of foot you are does not avail you. You are going to die and no one will hear from that moment. Know your name. You will be gone. You will be removed from this earth. And before that mighty wave hits you, the ground opens up and drinks it down so that not one spot of water reaches your sock. So did Christ, our mighty champion, on Calvary, take our sin and bear the wrath of Almighty God. 
And I hear men say, this is cosmic child abuse. My heart, I don't know whether to cry or go to battle. It is the most precious truth to me because my sins are so high that only a work like that can save me. Once I was preaching at a secular university, and as I was preaching on the atonement, this student stood up and he said, I got a question for you. I said, what? How can one man suffering for a few short hours on a cross save a multitude of men, a countless multitude according to you, of men from eternal judgment? I said, son, you meant it for evil, but God will mean it for good. Thank you for that question. Now sit down. You want to know how that one man dying alone for a few short hours on a tree can save a multitude of men from an eternity in hell because that one man is worth more than all of them put together. You take mountains and molehills, crickets and clowns, you take everything, every planet, every star, every form of beauty, everything that sings, everything that brings delight, and you put it all in the scale, and you put Christ on the other side, and He outweighs them all. He outweighs them all. <laughs> Brethren, this is the one we chase after. Go to your studies. Go to your studies. Flee there, not to become smarter than the next man, but to behold his glory until it hurts you and disintegrates you and reconstitutes you and makes you a preacher. <laughs> 